Welcome back, everybody. This is the Monad mini-series. In each section, we will be discussing specific topics that will help us understand monads better. In the last video, we talked about functors and did a basic introduction. So if this code doesn't look familiar to you or you aren't familiar with function, functors already, check that video out. If you're already comfortable with functors and you're curious about what we're talking about in this video, stay tuned for pointed functors. So the problem that we were looking to solve at the end of the previous video was that we had to carry this implementation of map with us every single time that we created a new instance of my functor. And that's no fun. We don't want to be copying this code every single time, especially when we know that JavaScript allows us to link objects together and to do things in much cleaner ways than to just hard code this every single time. So let's do that with a pointed functor. And a pointed functor is simply a functor with an of method. So, before I explain what it is, let's just add an of. So, there we go, we have an of method. Obvious, obviously we need to actually make it do something, but we're part of the way there, right? So, it will take a value. In this case, we know that the value has to be a number because we are going to be applying it to the value property. And we can actually just steal this, do that. Uh, steal that as well. And we'll just return new functor. Let's remove all this. And we can now actually clean up Oops. Now actually just clean up our map method and just have it do what it's supposed to do, which is return f uh, this dot value. Because what we were actually doing there was we were combining map with of. We haven't added any real new logic. All we've done is moved everything that we were doing in map into of. And now in order to still have map behave the same way, we just need to do my functor dot of. Oops, and then not type a bunch of nonsense. Now let's we're going to do something crazy here. I'm going to just remove this completely. Alright? So what's happening here now? Oh man. Motorcycle gang of some oh no, it's a plane. All kinds of vehicles outside my house making all kinds of noise. So before we needed to we needed to make sure that we didn't lose this behavior. We needed to make sure that we returned the values in the same context, which is why we had all this logic inside of our map. We've just moved it into an of method, and now we can call that of method to create a new instance of the functor, and then just feed the updated value into that. Now what this means, conveniently, is that we can use this of method outside of the function. So instead of just having all that logic trapped inside of our map, we can now expose it via of. And so if I go down here, and I wanted to create, let's just say, my first functor, we could do something like my functor dot of, and then pass in I don't know, 41. Go down here to my, make it my first functor. And so now my first functor is an instance of my functor, but the value property will have 41. And so we would expect that if we map add one over our functor, we will get a new instance of my functor with the value 42. Let's see if that's true. Nope, I did something wrong. F is not defined. Uh, where am I using F? Right here. Uh, of, I don't want to do of. I want it to be X. 
So what I did wrong there was I forgot to remove some of the logic from map. Map is what applies the function to this value of simply takes whatever value it receives and puts it onto the value property in this iteration of, or in this version of my functor. So apologies for that. If we run that, we get a new instance of that functor with the value set to 42. Now what's great about this is that we can actually just keep mapping add one or whatever functions we want over top of this. If I were to do that and then run it, because it always returns it in the same context, map can always know where to find the value and so we can just keep on updating it. And so this is the same as when you see someone do dot map dot map dot map or dot map dot filter, they're just piggybacking because the context stays the same. And so we can do that the same way here with our map function that piggybacks off the context of the map method in our functor. And if you think, well, it seems kind of weird, why would we create an of method? Well, you might not know this, but that actually exists as well for the array. If we do something like that and then run it, we get the exact same thing. So job, the JavaScript language already implements this as a way of instantiating its functors with array.of. So if we create our own functor, then we can call .of and we're following the exact same rules as JavaScript as a language, which is pretty cool. So that's how you create a pointed functor. Now, you might still be looking at me, or trying, looking at the screen maybe, I guess. You're not, hopefully you're not actually looking at me. You might be looking at your screen going, all right, all right, I follow, I follow. But I understand why we were using array. We want to hold multiple values. My functor doesn't solve any problems. All it does is get in the way of doing regular computations. So what is the point of making a functor? Well, that can be answered by, first of all, a video I made recently where I just ranted about function structure. I'll link it in the description or throw a card up in the corner so you can check it out. Um, and I led up to, to an argument about sometimes a function should not be run and sometimes it should be. And it makes more sense for that logic to exist outside of the function. The way that we can do that in JavaScript is with what's called the maybe functor. And what the maybe functor has is a unique implementation of map that basically says under some conditions, let's apply this transformation. So the F that was passed in, under other conditions, will return a default value. And this allows you a lot of consistency and predictability with your composed functions, even if you're dealing with unpredictable inputs like user input. And so that's gonna be what we cover in the next video. If you like this, like the video, stay tuned for the next one, and I'll see you there. Bye.